Aren't the heavens a magnificent blue? Except, of course, they're black. It's the sky that's blue. Except that's really colourless. It's only made blue by sunlight, which is actually white. Sounds confusing? Let's deconfuse you. If you look at the Earth from space, in fact, it appears to be blue, but back off a bit and you'll see that the heavens, really, the space that surrounds the Earth, is absolutely completely black. There's just this thin skin sitting around the Earth that is blue. That's our atmosphere. And that's really what we know as the sky. But it isn't really blue. It's only turned blue by sunlight. And yet we say sunlight's white. Well, let's see if we can uh, demystify you on that one. In fact, sunlight is white, pure white light coming from the sun. But we can use a thing like a prism, a little bit of glass here, and break that white light up. And if we do, we see the colours that are in it. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet. And those colours together make up white light. And in fact, if you take those colours and put them into a colour wheel, you can see some of their interesting properties. Of course, this doesn't work with paint, it only works with light, but let's say these are the lights that are in the rainbow or in the, in the spectrum that we've just made. So there we are, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And if you put them around like that, with the complementary, sort of opposite colours arranged in this fashion, you can see what's going to happen if you take one of them out. Let's take out blue, because we're interested in blue at the moment. What's going to be left is light that isn't white anymore, but is dominated by the colour opposite blue, the complementary colour, orange. So take blue out, you'll get orange. And if you take out orange, or if you take out yellow, say, as we'll do a bit later, you're left with light dominated by the complementary colour. It's going to look rather purpley. And that's what we're doing when, or what's, what we're seeing really, when the sunlight comes streaming in through the atmosphere. Because the atmosphere's particles of air and gas and water vapour and dust scatter the light in different ways. The blue is scattered most easily of all. Well, let's see if we can make up a little atmosphere in a glass. You can try this at home. All it needs is clean water and a few drops of milk and a torch. A pretty good torch that isn't running flat, otherwise you get funny sort of colour problems. Now, don't overdo the milk. You want just enough to turn it faintly milky, just so that you can't clearly see through it. Let me stir that up and uh, see what we've got here. OK, can't see through that. That's like a very muggy sort of atmosphere. Now, you're sitting on the Earth, the sun's over here, and you're looking up through that atmosphere, which is the sky. And if I put the sun up against it and turn it on, you'll notice that the atmosphere glows. And it's only a very faint colour, but you might be able to pick up just a little bit of blue in that. Actually, the whole milky glass is glowing a little bit blue from the studio lights. So the white light comes in and the blue bit is scattered, making that sky or atmosphere glow a little bit blue. But if we're taking blue out of the white light of the sun, what are we going to be left with? Well, you see that at sunset. Because there, you're looking at the sun directly through a great thick layer of atmosphere, really. And because the blue's been scattered, you've got white light minus blue, and you're left with the oranges and the yellows, and even a t uh, sort of tinge of red there. You can tell the torch is actually white if you look at it like that. But through the atmosphere, the blue's been scattered into the sky, and the rest is the yellow and the orange. So that if you look at the sun in the middle of the day, or near the sun, you can see the sky is rather white, but as you look away from it, you get the blue of the sky, particularly up around the equator. And at the end of the day, when you're looking at the sun through all of that atmosphere, the blue is gone, and you're left with orange, yellow and red. Well, that's not the only way you can take different colours out of white light. The astronauts did it too. If you've seen pictures of the astronauts when they landed on the moon and did the spacewalk, you'll notice that they wore gold visors. They were to reflect, in fact, most of the radiation coming in. The heat bounced out and a lot of the light did too. But being gold, of course, they reflected not white light, but yellow light. And if we look back at the colour wheel, we'll be able to predict what they saw. Take the yellow out of the light by bouncing it back again, and the only light that can get through to you, what light does get through to you, is going to be dominated by the complementary. It's going to be rather purplish. And this is the sort of thing they looked through. I've made some of it into a pair of dark glasses. You might have seen people wearing dark glasses like this, only they're usually rather silver instead of uh, uh, gold. It may look a bit strange to you, but like staring at a beetle. But in fact, I can see through that the gold's so thin. And you can too. Here's a bit of it. If I hold that very thin gold film up and you have a look through it, you'll notice that 
Well, that's very hard to see through, not much light gets through. The colour of it is very slightly purpley because the gold light has been reflected right back into the atmosphere. In fact, right back into those blue skies we started with. Thank you.